everyone thinks about the body chemistry as being a body chemistry change that takes place when we change the body chemistry. Everyone who talks about nutrition or medicine or anything else, they talk about changing the body chemistry and they talk about the, if, the impact on patients of their therapies by changing the body chemistry. But what people forget about, don't even forget about, they never knew about, is that there is a neurological impact for all these chemical treatments. So you get somebody who goes to a patient, uh, get a patient who goes to a, a nutritionist and they change their diet and there's something or other pain goes away or their brain clears up or their, or their um, uh, digestion clears up. And the, the, the therapist is going to say, oh, you changed your diet so your pain cleared up because we got all the inflammatory chemicals out and your brain cleared up because we created clearer neurotransmission because of the blood sugars are being handled better and the nerves are firing better because of better blood sugar handling problems and your gut cleared up because we got all that terrible stuff out of your gut and the bad bacteria can't grow. And they're right. But what they're missing is that their pain may have cleared up because they don't have that bombardment 23,000 times a day from the pancreas reflex apparently creating changes in the cerebellum, changes in the opposite mesencephalon and the opposite cortex, and changes in the cerebellum creating descending pathways by the vestigial nucleus ipsilaterally, and changes by the cerebellum affecting the mesencephalon creating bilateral autonomic changes and bilateral muscular changes from the parabrachian nucleus changing mechanoreceptor activity to block all that nociception from changes in afferentation from the change from that one rib moving apparently 23,000 times a day. They don't even think about the fact that there's a neurological impact that also reinforces the chemical impact. We need to think about that. We need to know that. And then they talk about the fact that the blood sugar got better so your probably brain is clearer because now your brain is clearer because you don't have all that low blood sugar causing your nerves not to fire in your brain properly, and I wouldn't disagree with that, but I'd also say you now have less, you have normal affrontation, so this rib is moving normally now, so the cerebellum is getting normal input, so the right cortex is getting normal input, and your right brain and your left cortex, your le right and left cortex are now more imbalanced, so your brain is going to be clearer because your cortical functions more equally bilaterally, because you're getting equal affrontation right and left, because the rib's not moving apparently anymore. And then they might say your gut is off, and the gut's normal because you got rid of all that horrible carbohydrate which unfriendly bacteria could grow on. And I would say absolutely I'd agree with that. Candida and things. Absolutely I'd agree with that. But they wouldn't consider the fact that we need to know about and to consider that when that rib starts moving properly, we're restoring normal cerebellar function, which is going to take the stress off the vestigial nucleus, distending for the parasympathetic ipsilaterally, and it's going to go to the mesencephalon on the other side, restoring normal function of the mesencephalon, so it will change the mesencephalic particular formation, which will descend bilaterally creating autonomic effects bilaterally and normalize those. So there is a neurological explanation for all the chemical changes that people throw around and talk about the reasons for it. There's a neurological explanation for those things as well. And that neurological explanation is just as important as the chemical explanations and sometimes explains the phenomenon we see better. And so we need to be aware of this concept of deaffrontation, rib deaffrontation, and changes that take place with patients when we do chemical changes that have a neurological impact on them as well. Because that is potentially as profound as any chemical change. And neurologically speaking, if we're talking about keeping the brain active to late years in life, if we're talking about keeping the brain active, we want the brain to be lighting up all the time, we want affrontation coming into the brain all the time, as much affrontation as possible on both sides of the brain when we're awake, to keep us awake and keep our brain work and keep the neurons firing and keep the neurons healthy by frequency of firing. And to do that, we have to create changes mechanically, and we can do that chiropractically with our therapeutic treatments, and we can do that with other types of mechanical inputs to the body, such as rehab and exercise, and we do that, but we also need to reinforce that, not just by our chemical treatments for their chemical effects, but by our chemical treatments for restoring normal affrontation to the ribs and all the other muscles that drive the affrontation throughout the body to keep our minds active. And so when we change our body chemistry, we're also changing our body muscular structure, including intercostal muscles, including all the muscles we know related to organs, and driving our tortex to more levels of function by creating full ranges of motion, full ranges of affrontation, whatever joint we're talking about, which keeps our brain alive longer, keeps our brain alert longer, and helps to keep us from deteriorating neurologically. And that's a piece no one talks about. Chiropractic neurologists talk about it. And some other people who are aware of nervous system, like at the Institutes for the Achievement of Human Potential, they know about it. But the piece that's missing is the connection between the structure and the chemistry. 
that the chemistry changes the structure in such a way that it drives the nervous system to better function and increases frequency of firing. And that's the piece that I wanted to share with you to give you the idea of the impact of our nutritional therapies are chemical, but they are also just as profoundly structural by restoring normal affrontation to areas which sometimes are moving 23,000 times a day, apparently. <laughs>